Elite Facts presents The 10 Greatest Tanks of World War II Through storms or through snows, the sun always shines on the tank. Hot days or icy nights, you'll always be happy as the tank's engine roars through the storm winds. In case you haven't guessed, this time we're talking about tanks, specifically those that saw use in World War II. And just to clarify, we're not directly covering any concept or prototype tanks like the mouse or self-propelled assault guns, as much as we love the stug life. 10. Type 97 Chiha How Japanese tanks fared against their British and American rivals in the Pacific theater is a debate best probably left to the comments section. In the meantime, let's talk about what is perhaps Japan's best known and most effective tank. Designed as an infantry support tank, the Type 97 Chiha first saw use in the Japanese invasion of China, where it's proved to be very effective. It proved itself more than effective against China's limited supply of tanks and gave the Japanese infantry the advantage they needed. However, after coming up against Soviet tanks in late 1939, their flaws started to show. They were consequently upgraded into the Type 97 Shin Ho To Chiha tanks which packed a better punch with their high-velocity main guns. They proved very effective in the Japanese conquest of the Eastern Pacific when their smaller size and lighter weight let them outmaneuver the chunkier Allied tanks in the jungle terrain. That said, they were very vulnerable to the firepower of Allied tanks, but the creative tactics of their commanders meant they could still hold their own and match them in battle. So we guess we've given you a starting point, tank debaters. 9. M3 Lee in terms of firepower and armor, the medium tank M3 was by no means the greatest, but it earns a place on this list by being the workhorse of the Allied fight in North Africa. The American M3 Lee first saw a lot of use in British hands in North Africa. The British had ordered some 2,855 of them to meet their urgent need for medium tanks. Ones that came as standard were known as Lees, after Robert E. Lee and those that were modified to British specs were known as Grants, after Ulysses S. Grant. Their main gun's power caught the Germans off guard when the M3 made an appearance at the Battle of Gazala, as it was powerful enough to allow the M3 to sit outside of the effective range of the German anti-tank guns. However, its riveted construction could cost the crew when under fire, as rivets could fly loose inside, behaving like bullets. The M3's mechanical reliability and decent armor did earn it the love of its crews in North Africa. It also did the British well in Burma, where it was more than a match for the Japanese Type 95s. The introduction of the M4 Sherman saw the M3 rendered almost obsolete by the end of the North African campaign, but many M3s were adapted into their uses, such as recovery vehicles or as howitzer platforms. 8. Churchill after the First World War, the British believed that there was a need for a tank that would be a master of a war of the same conditions. Earlier A-20 models of the Churchill tank were designed to meet those needs and were rushed into production to make sure Britain was defended in the event of an invasion. After watching how the art of tank warfare was developing, the A-22 Churchill and A-22F models went into production and proved itself a tough old tank. While its smaller turret meant it couldn't take use of the most powerful gun, it could still fight hard enough back against German Panzer IVs and Vs. The Churchills also sported some pretty thick armor, which crews would often add to, meaning they could really take a hit. And despite its large size, it proved to be excellent at crossing obstacles in the terrain, thanks to the original expectation of World War I battle conditions. They were also some of the first Allied tanks that could take punishment from German Tigers and dish it back, KOing them. The Churchill was so versatile that many variants were made on it, including the flame-throwing Churchill Crocodile, the armored recovery Churchill ARV, and the Churchill Bridge Lair, which has a self-explanatory role. All in all, the Churchill was a damn fine infantry support tank that proved itself capable in a multitude of roles. 7. King Tiger, Tiger II Big, it was big. The Tiger II was perhaps the biggest, most badass macho tank of the war. Designed to have the raw power and heavy armor of the Tiger I and the sleek sloped armor of the Panther, more on those later, the Tiger II was an absolute beast on the battlefield. 
Armed with the 8.8 cm KWK 43 main gun and some fine optics, the Tiger II could end most other tanks it faced with its accurate and powerful main gun. It could punch its way through six inches of steel from just over a mile away. Given the Allied Shermans and T-34s had about two inches of frontal armor, Allied tank crews were naturally fearful of facing one of these beasts in battle. The Koenigs Tiger, or King Tiger, though perhaps better translated as Bengal Tiger, weighed a whopping 68.5 tons, but could still give chase at 30 miles per hour. It was also reported to be a lot more reliable than its aforementioned precursors, as German mechanical design became more streamlined. What let this behemoth of a tank down were a number of strategic factors. It was a gas guzzler. Germany's shortage of fuel severely handicapped the Tiger II's effective range. This wasn't helped either by its size and weight, which meant it was harder to transport and didn't fare well when faced with some obstacles. Towards the end of the war, when these beasts saw service, Germany's resources and supply lines were suffering significantly. Allied bombing likely put an end to some 1,000 Tiger IIs before they were even built. More often than not, KOs of these tanks occurred because they were abandoned by their crews, who had run out of fuel or other means to keep them running. 6. M4 Sherman If you ever need evidence of the strength of the American economy as it rode out of the Great Depression in the Second World War, you need look no further than the M4 Sherman tank. Sheer numbers alone helped make the Sherman into one of the most effective tanks of the war. While it may have a bit of a reputation for blowing up a bit too easily amongst its opponents and users alike, the endlessly adaptable Sherman is easily one of the most recognizable tanks in history. The Sherman saw significant use by the U.S. with a large number being used by the U.K. and even a few being used by the USSR. Originally intended to be used with America's take on Blitzkrieg tactics, the M4 Sherman found itself performing a number of different roles on the battlefield. Initially, the 75mm M3 gun was enough to let the Sherman deal with German Panzer III's and IVs, but the introduction of the German Tiger meant the Sherman often came in heavier variants. The British Sherman Firefly was a much beefier variant of the Sherman with a main gun designed to take on Tigers. Flame-throwing Zippo and Crocodile variants also proved useful, especially in the Pacific Theater where the American Zippo proved effective at flushing Japanese infantry out from their bunkers, such as at Iwo Jima. The M4 Sherman was endlessly adaptable, a seemingly endlessly produced armored gift to the Allied war effort. 5. Panzer IV the most produced German tank of the war and probably their most adaptable, naturally being the basis for several different engines of destruction. The brainchild of legendary German armored and motorized military tactician Heinz Guderian, the Panzer IV was initially developed to support other tanks by eliminating hostile anti-tank capabilities. The initial models had short-barreled 75mm and were more than a match for the earlier British and French tanks. After the shock of the impressive Russian T-34s and heavy KV-1s during Operation Barbarossa, the Panzer IV was forced to adapt to take on these new threats. This meant the adding of a longer-barreled version of the 75mm gun designed for armor penetration and from 1943 onwards, the addition of armored skirting on the sides and turret of the tank. The Panzer IV proved itself both capable and reliable and was readily used by any Russians who captured them. The chassis of the Panzer IV was used in many different variants, including the Stug IV assault gun, Jagged Panzer IV tank destroyer, the Stumpanzer IV support gun, and the Werbelwind self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. Basically, the Panzer IV was a highly adaptable German workhorse tank that proved itself more than enough times in battle. 4. M26 Pershing a late entry into the war, the M26 Pershing was America's heavier offering to the battlefield and one of the Tiger I and II's toughest contenders. Only 20 of these tanks actually saw action in World War II, but they performed admirably in the European theater against their intended rivals. They were capable of KOing Tiger I's and Panzer IVs with relative ease and could hold their own against the Tiger II. While one Pershing was briefly KO'd after being caught off guard by a Tiger, it was still repairable and put back in service. M26 Pershings famously saw action at the Battle of Remagen, where they held back German Tiger IIs and Jagged Panthers as battle raged for control of the Ludendorff Bridge. The one foe they couldn't best in that battle was the Ludendorff Bridge, which the Pershings were simply too heavy to cross. 
III. Panzer V Panther After encountering the Russian T-34 and its sloped armor, which gave it effectively double thickness and increased the chance of shells glancing off, the Germans were keen to make a tank of their own that utilized this armoring principle. German tanks until this point had been rather boxy, relying on the thickness of the armor to take enemy fire, but the Panther changed that up. Initially designated the Panzer V and intended to be the successor to the Panzer IV, the Panther was the bad boy of medium tanks. Its armor and armaments were considered heavy by the Allies, but clever German engineering made the Panther quite quick and able to achieve speeds of 34 miles per hour, which may not sound like much today but was damn good for a tank back then. One of the main weaknesses of the Panther was that its German engineering was actually a little too clever. That is to say, it was over-engineered, which made it unreliable as fine-tuned mechanisms could be fragile and generally made a Panther a nightmare to repair. As it was initially rushed into service to meet the oncoming Russian armies, it suffered many mechanical failures, but these were ironed out as time went on, but Allied bombings affected the production of these tanks and hindered the training of their crews. Because of all this, many Panthers were often lost because their crews simply abandoned them. Despite all these flaws, the Panther is still regarded as one of the best tanks of World War II. How? Well, because when it was working as intended, it worked damn well. Even at their debut battle at Kursk, where mechanical failures handicapped them, the Panthers were still able to destroy anything the Russians threw at them. As the kinks in the designs were worked out, the Panther tanks only got better at this on both the eastern and western fronts. 2. Tiger One. The name was just about synonymous with super tank, and in terms of combat power, it really was. The Tiger I was probably the most fearsome tank on the battlefield until the Tiger II entered the fray. After the Germans realized the power of their 88mm anti-aircraft gun as an anti-tank gun, they were quick to realize the potential of arming a tank with this mighty weapon. Building on the basic design of the Panzer IV, German engineers started designing one of the toughest, most badass tanks of the war, and the Tiger I was the result. Despite resembling the Panzer IV, the Tiger weighed more than double. This was partly due to the massive main gun and necessary ammunition storage, but also down to thick, thick armor on this tank. The frontal armor alone was just about impenetrable for most of the war, being some 100 millimeters thick. Because it was too heavy for most bridges, the Tiger was designed to simply barrel through river depths of up to 4 meters, using a snorkel device and inflatable seals. Much like the Panther, it had issues with being over-engineered, leading to reliability issues, though these were gradually overcome. The Tigers did still require a large support network to keep them running and fueled, and they were quite expensive to produce. These non-combat issues were its main issues, so one of the best ways to beat a Tiger tank was simply to avoid it until it ran out of fuel or got stuck in the mud or until a piece of engineering broke on it. Besides this, the Allies needed their heaviest tanks and dedicated heavy tank destroyers to deal with the Tiger. Because of all its raw power, the Tiger I remains one of the most fearsome tanks in history. 1. T-34 the Russian T-34 is probably the tank, more than any other tank, that decided the outcome of the war. It is often credited as the most efficient and effective tank of the Second World War, as well as the one that was most influential on tank design. When the T-34 debuted against the Germans, they were shocked to see that the Russians had a tank that could take just about whatever they threw at it. The armor was relatively thick and was, importantly, sloped. As mentioned before with the Panther, sloping armor radically changes the penetrative power of incoming shells. The T-34 may not have had the thickest of armors or the most powerful of guns, but what it did have was reliability, a simple and user-friendly design, and a certain Russian ruggedness. This meant they could be quickly produced and mastered by even barely literate peasant recruits in a couple of weeks. The simplicity in design also meant it could be produced en masse, so much so that it was just about a case of every one that was destroyed, two more could take its place. Soviet Russia gave blood to win the war, and T-34 was the mechanized part of that effort. Their wide and robust treads meant they could handle well in the soggy Russian snows and thaws when their German rivals could not. Sure, the more powerful Tigers and Panthers could KO the T-34 quite easily, but the T-34s would just keep coming at them regardless. The all-around effectiveness of the T-34 meant that even the Germans were more than happy to use any that they captured. 
What is really testament to the T-34's overall effectiveness and efficiency is the fact that 77 years since they were first rolled into combat, they are still in active service with some militaries today, being used as recently as the Libyan Civil War, the Eastern Ukrainian conflict, and last year in Yemen. The T-34 is quite simply a legendary tank that proved itself effectively reliable and reliably effective and embodied the tenacity of the Russian fighting spirit. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.